Okay, so I had gotten a request from a couple of people to describe briefly the atomic spectrum and the flame test that we did today in class. And so I'm going to explain it showing atom-wise what's going on and then showing what you actually see. So here's your nucleus. And what Bohr discovered, or what he said, was that every single atom has specific energy levels where the electrons will be found. So what he's saying is that electrons orbit around the nucleus, which we have actually said is not the case, but, you know, let's actually talk about um, what he was saying. So these, each of these levels is a, called a principal energy level. Principal energy level. I'm not going to write the whole thing out. And the interesting thing is that electrons can only be in one of these energy levels. So this is n equals 1, the first energy level. This is n equals 2. The next one's n equals 3. An electron can't be in between levels. You can think of this like a bookshelf or a ladder. You can be on one of the rungs or one of the shelves, but you can't be in between floating in midair. So what happened in the lab that we did today for the flame test lab your electrons are normally at a low energy level where they're stable and they're very happy. And so we call that, wherever they're happy, their ground state. They don't have a bunch of energy. They're content where they are. But the interesting thing is if you apply some sort of energy, if you provide them with some form of energy, so in our case, bow, 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 whew, we gave them um, flames, we gave them fire. It excites them, so they're going to jump up to a higher energy level. Now, that higher energy level, when they're at that higher energy level, we say that the electrons are excited. So we say that they are now excited. Now, if they're jumping around, they have high energy, they are not stable. Now, just like when we were talking about with radioactivity, when we said that the whole point of radioactivity, the reason why it happens is because the nuclei isn't, um, the nucleus or the nucleuses aren't stable. In this case, electrons don't want to be unstable either, and they are when they're in the excited state. So as a result, as soon as it becomes excited, right, quickly after that, it's going to jump back down to its ground state. In order to do that, because going from the ground state to the excited state required energy, in order to go back down to the ground state, it's going to have to emit energy or release energy. It emits energy. If it's emitting energy, that is when we see a specific color because that energy is being released as electromagnetic radiation with a very specific wavelength. And as a result, what we see is visible light. Now, the cool thing is that for every single element, a bunch of electrons are doing this. They might be going from 4 to 3 or 4 to 2, et cetera, et cetera. Every single atom of a certain element will have a unique set of energies that are being released at a given time. Okay? So as a result of going from 4 to 2, a very specific energy might be released. 4 to 1, a very specific amount of energy will be released. And so as a result, we see those energies in the form of specific colors of light. So one might be red, you might have a couple of reds, and each line represents a very specific energy that's released, right? A very specific wavelength, a very specific frequency, because they're going from one principal energy level down to another, okay? And so all elements have very unique, we call these atomic emission spectrum. Atomic, I'll just call it atomic emission because I'm struggling with writing today. But the interesting thing in the lab that we did, so we were actually not looking at the atomic emission, we were looking at this process, but what we saw when we stuck our... Um, our elements into the flame, we saw just bright bursts of color. So for one of them, we saw a bright purple burst of color. The reason why we don't see each individual color is because we don't have a prism that can break up each of the colors. Instead, we see a combination of all of the colors, and that's what we saw when we stuck it into the flame. 
The only time that we can see individual colors is if we have an instrument that's called a spectroscope and it actually has a prism in there and it'll break up the colors based on their energy levels or if it's raining. If it's raining, what you see is a beautiful rainbow. And the reason why you see that beautiful rainbow is because water is actually acting like a prism. And so it's breaking up white light, the, the light from the sun, into each of these individual beautiful colors. And that's why you can see a rainbow. That's why it looks so cool. And that's it, guys.